Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Bruni and welcome back. So this is going to be the third lab for SN207 Programming for Engineers. And in this particular video, we are going to look at data and data types. So in the previous video, we looked at what variables are and now we are going to look at what data is or the various data types. So looking at the first or the previous video, there are some few things that might kept you wondering. And if you already had those questions in mind, then it means you are following along or at least you are paying attention. So clearly when we are writing things like Kenneth Brony, Brony, University of Ghana, Kenneth and stuff like that, we are putting this in a double or single quotation mark. We've already discussed that. But then when we are writing these numbers, we just wrote it raw like that. We didn't put it in any quotation mark. And if you are thinking along that line, then of course, you are gradually beginning to see the light good and that's simply because we have different data types so basically the data is a value that is stored inside a variable and if i'm to come back here you could clearly see that x was a variable in this case and remember we are unpacking so in this case the data that was stored in x was this 10 and 20 and in the case of y the data stored over here was 50. In the case of school, school was a variable and the data is the University of Ghana. So we are now we are going to delve into exactly what this data is and things like that. So they are like two sides of a coin. They complement each other. The data is a value stored inside of the variable and the variable is a placeholder for storing data. So now having gotten that out of the way, let's look at the various data types we have in Python. Now the first one we are going to discuss is the strange. And Python represents this by str. So a string is a collection of characters declared within a single or double quotation mark. And we've seen this over and over again. So we have something like name, and we can have a single quote, and we can have Kenneth like this, and we can have something like full name, and in double quotes, I'm going to have Kenneth Brony. So this is looking good, and this is a typical example of a string. So now, you definitely also would need to check. So over the previous videos, we've been printing this. So for instance, you can print name over here. And when I run this, we see that if it is within a single quote, it is still printed out over here. And now let me also print out the full name. And the full name is also printed out over here as Kenneth Brony. Now, let's also print out something over here and we are going to print not just the name and the full name but then we are going to print the data type so inside of this print we are going to type in type okay and when i type in type over here like this i'll bring in a bracket and i'll pass in name over here so all that i'm trying to say is i want to print something sorry i want to print something okay around name but then i want to print the type or the data type of the name variable i have over here now the next thing i would also want to do is definitely to print and this time around i also want to print the data type of what i have as full name over here so now i'll save this and see what's going to happen let me come in here inside of my terminal and clear everything over here so now when i run this let's open this up a little bit and see so now on line seven we are printing name which is kenneth on line eight we are printing the data type of name which we see as class str now later on we are going to discuss extensively what these classes are but then we can see str which is a representation of a string and now we are also printing full name which is kenneth bruni and we are printing the data type of full name which is also str so the whole point i want to make here is irrespective of the fact that we have a single quote or a double quote once it is within those quotation marks whether single or double it is going to be considered as a string so this is looking good now let me just comment these ones out and let's make progress now if you were wondering why i was actually typing some numbers and not putting it in quotation mark yes is because that's also a different data type and this is what we have as integer 
So the integer is a positive or negative whole number. So for instance, we can have something like age. So age is going to be equal to 19. Now this looks very interesting. Now let's have another age. And because of the fact that Python is case sensitive, small letter age and capital letter age are going to be different. And now let's put this inside of a quotation mark and let's have 90 over here. Now I want to show you this. So now let's print small letter age. Okay. And now let's also print capital letter age as we have them over here. And now before we do anything, let me just clear our terminal. Now let me run this and we see we have 90, 90 showing up over here. So in terms of how they look, they look the same. In fact, they're actually the same technically, but then they are different. And we are only going to see that if we decide to print the data type. So I'm going to type in type over here and I'll print the type of small letter H. And I'm going to also do print. And over here, I'm going to print the type of capital letter H. So I'll save this. And now when I run this, you can see that the first one, which was small letter H, which we didn't put in any quotation mark, we just left it like that. That is being represented as an int. So Python recognizes int as the integer. And now you could see that when it comes to what we have on line 15, which is the capital letter H, when I printed it out on line 19, we see H, I mean 90 over here. And then if we are to print the data type, we see a strange over here. And that's why I'm saying that the strange is a collection of characters. A is a character, B is a character, 9 is a character. But the moment we put it in a quotation mark, then it becomes a strange. So we need to be mindful of that. So if you want to do this, then this is looking good. But if you don't want to have this, then we can ignore this. But in some cases, you may need, I mean, things being represented this way. We are going to look at all those use cases as we move along. So once again, let me just comment this one so that we can move on to the other data types. So now let's look at floats. And a float is a fractional or decimal value. So a typical example of a float is, let's say we have height. And height is going to be something like, let's say, 4 point, I mean 6.6 .6 foot. And what we have over here, you can see that there's a fraction, okay? Now, if I'm to print my height or the height variable we have over here, and we have to print the data type of height. If I'm to save this, and I run this, we clearly see that we have 6.6 .6 and this is a float. Now, one of the floats you might be interested in um, is your GPA. So let's say we have a variable called my GPA. And uh, yes, we have some sharks in this class. So GPA is 3.95. Some of you are laughing. Now let's do a print of my GPA. And you can as well print your own GPA. That one is up to you and your God. Then we can put in the type over here and we can type in my GPA. And when I save this, remember I've commented the height, the print height and print data type of height. So definitely this will not be highlighted or this will not be printed out. So currently when I run this, you can see that we get 3.95 and the data type as we are trying to print over here is float. So everything is looking good. Now let's comment these ones out. And now let's come to what we have over here as complex numbers. Now, Python is one of few programming languages that support complex numbers. And these are some of the reasons why as engineers, we need to learn Python. So a complex number is a number which consists of a real part and an imaginary part. This you should know by now. So let's say we have um, some variable name called values and values let me say, let me rather do my value, okay? So my value is going to be equal to a complex number. So I'm going to say three plus, for instance, maybe five J. Now the moment I write three plus five J, this is considered a complex number because three now becomes a real part, which is a real number. And 5G becomes the imaginary part. Now, you agree with me that in most cases, the way we represent the, um, the imaginary part of complex numbers is when we use the I. But in some electrical books, you see that I is also being used to represent current. So, 
alternatively j is used now please bear in mind that there's no space between i and j i mean the five and j it is together so currently if i try separating them we get a hint that there's a problem over here so now when we put it together it changes color and it tells you that okay this is good now let's print this my value variables over i mean variable over here and let's also try printing out the data type of my value sorry not my gpa my value so now i'll save this and now when i run this we clearly see that this has been printed out okay there's some brackets around it no problem but the most important thing is we have a class of complex so these are complex number and now when i hover around this um, value you can see that this variable my value is complex and that's exactly what we see over here and when i try doing this we see that it is a complex number as well now this is looking good now later on we are going to do some arithmetic operations um, I think that will be on chapter 8 as we have it over here. And we are definitely going to look at some additions, multiplications, and things like that of complex numbers. And we are going to see them as we move along. Now, the last data type I would want to talk about here is a Boolean data type. And this is represented as bool. So a Boolean data type represents data that can only exist in two forms. And I'm reading from line 40. Good. So with two forms... Remember in class, I made mention of the fact that everything we write, as far as this high level language construct is concerned, is converted into some binary. And binary is a typical example of Boolean data type. So we can have our data only existing as one or zero. In some instances, we would want to have it as on or off or high or low. There is no pretty much any in between. So a typical use case, let's imagine we are designing um some kind of a system and you want to know people who have registered for instance how many students have registered so you can have a variable like is underscore registered registered and this can either be true or false and remember what i made mention of reserve keywords so python has reserved true and false because we want to use it for boolean data types Okay, and that's the reason why we cannot use true or false as our variable names. So these are some of the reasons why. So now if I'm to print out the data is registered. And now if I'm to also print the data type of is registered. And now save this once again. Let me just clear this. Now if I'm to run this. We get true over here and we get the class or printing the data type as bool. Now remember what I said. If I'm to type in T R U E, it is the same true, but clearly we have an error over here. Now who can tell me what's happening? Because I've already discussed that. Yes, it is because Python is case sensitive. Okay, so this true you have it over here it is not the same as this capital true all right now we can also see false and now when i do false and i run this we can really see false and it is of a data type boolean or boom all right so this is going to be the end of these data types and clearly you can see that we've actually expanded on the knowledge we had with variables so like i said we are building on this chapter by chapter in the next chapter, we are going to look at input functions and things of that sort. Now, like I said, please practice these videos. These videos are not meant for you to be watching and eating alongside. It is watching and coding alongside. It is not a typing class. You need to understand everything you are typing over here. Because by the time you get to about the 12th chapter, the 13th chapter, the 17th chapter, you could see that these fundamentals are going to play a key role in you understanding python and of course solving problems around programming thank you very much and we'll meet in class if you have any question just write it down and we'll discuss in class on tuesday thank you very much and bye bye